Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with RWGresearch.com and this is a video response to Tin Man's video response about these Tesla pancake coils. So before I start, I have to respond to my other video of the responses of the responses. So really quickly, I need to go over a few things. Okay, so in my last video, I demonstrated a phase shift. Now, Tin Man uh, kindly replied and said that I had it all wrong. Um, and then a couple other comments out there, um, and the only one that made good sense was Tin Man's argument about how I measured and eFinder's comment about making an assumption. So I did make a small assumption because I wasn't for sure of the global scale of this yet, but I did not specify anything and everything I said in that video holds true. So what I was showing you was a phase shift. And that was a phase shift between what the current looked like on the inside of the two coil windings and what the current looked like coming in. And there was indeed a phase shift, a 180 degree phase shift from in phase to out of phase. And right in the middle somewhere between 40, uh, no, between 60 and 70, there was this sweet spot where it appears we have a measurement of lower current on the outside versus what we have oscillating between the inside of the coil. So my complete argument on that portion of that video was I wanted to show a phase shift. Now, because I was measuring across a resistor, right, non-inductive, non-capacitive load, but a resistor, we don't have any concern about power factor here. And I agree with that statement. However, we have a current shift, okay, and it's hard to measure. The way I measured the voltage doesn't really count, but I measured a current phase shift. That's all I was trying to point out. The other part of that video was me pointing out the fact that we cannot measure DC the same way we measure AC because of power factor. Now, I know you guys know this, a lot of people don't. So I'm gonna explain it really quickly. What is the difference between AC and DC? Alternating current and direct current, okay? Well, I'm not gonna go into that de detail, but what I wanna tell you is when you use AC versus DC, DC Ohm's law, okay? You want watts, you take volts, times amps, that's watts. You can use this measurement with DC only. When you start getting into pulse DC and other things, it gets a little confusing, but straight DC, okay, watts is volts times amps. Now, when you're working with AC, this is where it gets a little confusing. You must use the power factor, which is the phase shift between voltage and current, okay? So AC watts equals volts times amps times the power factor. Okay, the difference in phase between current and voltage. That is a power factor measurement. Now, with that out of the way, that is what I was expressing in my last video. I actually didn't clarify any positive or negative results there. It was unconclusive, and I left it that way for a purpose because I wanted people to think about this. So, I'm no expert, okay? This instrument is pretty darn smart, and I'm pretty darn smart, but I'm not as smart as this instrument because this instrument can do things that's above my skill level. And I know how to use it correctly for the most part. However, these probes need to be working for the power factor analysis to be working correctly, and it did not. So that is my response to that whole ordeal, is I made two points. One, there is a phase shift in current between the inside and outside, because that's all I could measure without the current probes, right? And two, how to measure AC properly volts times amps times the power factor when using AC. In an inductor, okay, you have a lag in current. In a capacitor, you have an advanced of current, and that's how you get your phase shift. I'm gonna link some books in the description. They are from like 1930, and they're excellent. They take a physical meaning and turn it into an electrical meaning, and it's great. I highly recommend going and reading through the chapters on inductance, capacitance, power factor, phase shifts. It's like spend a week in there and you'll understand everything that I understand. It's real easy. But for 90, like 8% of us out there, we just think, ah, oh, volts times watts or volts times amps is watts. And we can apply that to everything we do, but that's actually not correct. So it was more an informative video, but thank you, 10 man and eFinder for pointing out the things you pointed out. Now let's get on to the the other tests that I want to do here, okay? Thumbs up. Again, if I say something wrong, correct me. This is good. I'm no expert. I'm just trying to share what I know. Let's do it. Welcome back, everybody. So 
I asked Tin Man, hey, what would you like me to measure with this four channel isolated ground oscilloscope? So that is what I'm doing. I'm going to show you exactly what Tin Man wanted me to show you. I'm not going to make any assumptions or claims because I want you to read the numbers and then you can do the math. You can figure out what's going on and you can tell me if what we're seeing is real or not. So let's do this. All right. Tin Man, he wanted me to do this. He wanted me to measure R1 as a current and then R1 and L2 across both of these as a voltage. Then he wanted me to measure R1 as a current and R1 and L2 across the voltage. Now personally I think this is a little incorrect but honestly it's so late at night I'm confused and I'm a little tired. However what I'm going to demonstrate right here is exactly what he asked me to do. So I have channel 2 across to R1 and I have channel 4 across to R1. Channel 1 across L1 and R1. Okay, See the connection? And channel 3 across L2 and R1. Okay, so ground is here, and then uh, for channel 1, channel 2, ground is here for channel 3 and 4. Okay, this is how he wanted me to set it up, so that's what I'm doing. Now, the reason that 2 and 1 are flipped here is because I have to use channel 2 as current for my power analysis software to work. So, what I'm going to show you, 10 man, uh, he told me in, the, in his response video that I'm going to see a lot more, um, a lot less... Uh, power being consumed here and a, uh, a lot more power you know output here so less in you know that's what he described it in his video R1 and L1 is going to consume less and there's going to be more on R2 and L2 over here so that out of the way you can go watch his video for what he wanted me to do with that out of the way I want to show you a quick screen capture of my previous video so the frequency is just about 3 megahertz it's actually on different screenshots it's a little more all right, my voltage measurement, you got to remember I got channel 1 and 2 is flipped. So channel 1 and 3 here is flipped, I mean, not 1 and 2, but 1 and 3 is flipped. Now I'm using channels 2 and 4 as my current measurement. So I'm measuring across 100 ohm resistors. Okay, so that's the way I've got it configured, the whole thing configured. So I've got 362 millivolts across R1 and 1.28 volts across R3. So that's technically a current measurement across the 100 ohm resistor. Okay, so I've got the exact same thing set up here. I'm going to switch my hands here. Um, I'm going to try to hold this steady for you because I want this to be clear. Okay, so I, I, what I've got is all voltage measurements current, currently, but I'm going to switch these probes. So channel 2 is across L1, channel 4 is across L2. You can see I have the equivalent numbers is what I have on my screenshot here. Alright, so we're at the same place and I'm just over on frequency but in my video I showed that this is actually a, a better frequency. I was just demonstrating something different there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to channel 2 and we're going to switch this to current. It's on 100 millivolts per amp. So if there's any scaling to do, up or down, then you'll need to do that. Currently, um, it is scaled, I believe. So just remember that this is scaled differently. So the true power ratings later is actually going to be, the decimal place is going to be moved around, but the numbers are correct. Don't worry about the scaling. Just know that they're equal. Okay, so I'm changing, all right, voltage to current. All right, and we'll go back to measure, and we can see now we're measuring 314 milliamps. All right, let's switch it back real quick so you can see this again. I'm going back to voltage, go back to measure. All right, we have 309 millivolts. Okay, so it's an equivalent measurement, as it should be. Actually, I don't think there's a scaling here. Had to go over that a while in my head, but I'm really tired, so forgive me. Uh, okay, then we're going to go to channel 4, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Actually, let's go to measure. Okay, we're at 1.35 volts. Okay, and let's go back to the channel. We're going to switch it over to current. We're going to go to measure. And it is uh, 1.35 amps. All right, let's go back and do it again just so you can see. Because I think I had that wrong. Yeah, volts. Okay, 1.34. All right, back to current. And there we are. 
Okay, so now we can do power analysis. Okay, so I'm doing power analysis the way 10 Man wanted me to do it here. Okay, channel one and channel three. And then we have current flowing through each one of these sections of the circuit. So here we go. Application, power analysis. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to channel one and two. All right, so true power. All right, true power. This is the power being consumed. Reactive power, okay. I'm not going to go into detail here because I don't want to misspeak. Now, true power factor is 0.93, so closer to 1. Phase angle is 21. Okay, now let's switch it. This, okay, before I switch it, these measurements, again, are here. Okay, these two measurements. So this is basically this half of the circuit. So now we're going to go and we're going to look at channels three and four, which is the other half of the circuit. Okay, we have about 90 milliwatts. I'm sorry, 900 milliwatts, almost one watt, right? Now, our reactive power is 3.89. Now look at our two power factor, is that 0.2? It's on the other side of the scale, all the way down to nothing, more towards zero. And the phase angle is 77, right? More towards uh, more towards our 90. So let's go back. Phase angle is 21. All right. Channel. I'll just let you look at the numbers. Here we go. Channel one. True power 1.6. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this repetitively. So here is the first half of the circuit. R1 L1. R1 L1. 1.6 watts. R2 L2 closer to 860, 900 milliwatts. Okay, let's go back. First half of the circuit, L1 and R1. Reactive power, six. Uh, it's 470 milli VAR. Channel three and four, we're all the way up at 3.8 VAR not milli. Alright, go back to channels 1 and 2. True power factor, look at that, really close to 1, which is a good thing. That means it's consuming power. Alright, channels 3 and 4, back down to 0.2. True power, right there. So the power is within the circuit, that's apparent, or the opposite of true. It's actually a mixture of the two, but like I said, I don't want to misspeak here, so just you do the math, you look at the numbers. Now the phase angle. 21. That's on the first part of the circuit. Let's go back to the second part. 77. Okay, so like I said, I really, really don't want to misspeak, but I definitely want you to understand what I was trying to say in my previous video. Um, now, this is a bit different. So I, I think he may have mentioned a different way of measuring it, a second version of measuring it, and I'll do that. Uh, right now it's really late, and I'm going to just shut this thing down, but I wanted to show you the numbers. Okay, these are the numbers. That's the first half of the circuit. True power, power factor, important numbers, and reactive power. Second half of the circuit. There it is. So do some homework, guys. Read about power factor. Understand how it works. Understand how things work here. Understand the way we're measuring it here, because this is a bit screwy in my head right now. And I don't know why I'm thinking so funny, but it's almost, I don't know, midnight or something. And I've been up way too many hours working on all these projects, and I love it. So this is actually a lot of fun, you know? Me and Ten Man... Let me set this camera down and turn the light on. Me and Ten Man actually started the uh, oh where's the hat me and tin man actually started the pulse motor build off with a challenge for a whole different reason that i don't need to go into and this is really the same thing man me and him were just working back and forth kind of argument argue, argue argue -tv. is that a word anyway and it's a lot of fun it's just, i love doing this stuff because the thing is is understanding how you measure understanding power factor with ac understanding what's happening in these coils it's just crazy. Now, Ten Man is demonstrating a light bulb. Okay, this is interesting. This is really interesting. He's demonstrating that on R1, okay, R1, no light bulb is being lit. 
and on R2 he can light a light bulb. Now because it's a resistive load, okay, you'd think it'd be consuming power. Okay, but just look at the numbers here with the reactive power and understanding reactive power and how that works inside of a circuit. And don't forget, you know, R2 is in between these two coils, okay, which is an interesting spot. So anyway, that's all I got for you. Like I said, this is great. You guys can uh, tell me what I did wrong or right. And hey, I'm glad, man. This is, this is how we learn. This is, we're teaching each other and we're learning. So we need to do this kind of stuff. Positive criticism, I take really well. And so let's have it. Do what you want. Game on. All right, peace and love, Tin Man, and everyone else out there watching. We'll see you on the next round. I'd like your video response on that might take a while for you to decide what's going on. I'm going to get some sleep and I'll decide what the heck is going on tomorrow. Bye. Oh, one last thing. Uh, we got a lot more work to do. This was one simple measurement. We need to do a complete measurement. We need to build an isolated circuit, not use a signal generator. The scope is isolated, but it's really hard to tell what's going on. Uh, Tin Man's using light bulbs and things to measure current, which is a great way of doing it. But still more information missing so yeah if we can light up a bank of light bulbs on the uh, r2 position of this coil and not on r1 well i don't know that's an interesting tell to tell but this is nowhere near over and i'm enjoying this um, unfortunately i don't have like a tremendous amount of time so you know a week might go by with no response to a response video but thumbs up guys we'll get there we'll figure this out i am no expert none but I do have the proper equipment, so I can learn as we go, if I need to. Don't forget, read those books down in the description. Seriously, it'll help.